I had an interaction on Twitter the other day where someone wanted to know how they could power the Raspberry Pi. Well, that's easy. You just plug in a USB cable and plug the other end to a phone power supply and that's it, it's powered, right? Well, a lot of the times it can work this way, but you, there are so, some ways things can go wrong. One of the first problems that could happen is the power supply simply might not provide enough power. USB power supplies may provide as little as uh, 500 milliamps of power, but the Raspberry Pi, specifically the Raspberry Pi 4, might need up to 3 amps. Even if you look at the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is the least power hungry of all of the Pis, it can need up to 1.2 amps. Okay, so that's a requirement to add. Uh, so if you get a power supply of capable of sufficient power and plug it in, is that sufficient? Well, not quite. Earlier versions of the Raspberry Pi 4 had a flaw in, in the USB-C ports. Because of a missing resistor, more, impe more intelligent power supplies didn't see the Raspberry Pi as an item that is requesting power. Now, I don't want to get into the details of what was going on there and what an e-marked cable is and so on. But the good news is this was corrected in later revisions of the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you have one of the more recent uh, revisions, then this isn't something that you have to worry about. When you connect it to a power supply, if it's capable, it will give the Raspberry Pi the power that it needs. Now, if you look at a pinout diagram of the 40 pin connector in a Raspberry Pi, you'll see some pins marked for 5 volts and ground. These are often used as power outputs for powering Pi accessories such as fans or sensors. These can also be used for providing power to the Pi. If you want to test it out, connect these pins to a 5 volt power supply and you'll see the Pi turn on. So these are the two primary ways of getting power into the Pi, either over that USB port or through the uh, 5 volt pins. Other methods of powering the Pi just really build on top of these. Now you could also power the Pi using a power over ethernet adapter. With power over ethernet, some of the unused wires in an ethernet cable can carry a voltage and it'll range somewhere between 40 volts and somewhere in the 50 volt range. Now your Pi doesn't run on 40 to 50 volts, so if you use this method, you need some additional hardware to step the voltage down. For older Pis, and that is the Raspberry Pi 2 and before, or the Raspberry Pi Zero, you need to connect an adapter that extracts the voltage from the ethernet cable and makes it available over USB. Now, these adapters will let the data lines flow through to the Pi, so it could still be connected to the ethernet port. Now for the 3B and the 4, the power over ethernet lines are exposed through four pins on a header that's behind where you see the USB and ethernet connectors. There are Pi hats that connect to these pins to provide the voltage to the ground and 5 volt pins on the Pi. If you're using additional hatch with your Pi, you might need to be selective about the power over ethernet connector that you select. Some of them will make the other pins unavailable for some hats. The minimalistic one that I use here prevents me from adding another hat on top of the Pi, though I can directly connect to the other pins. Some power over ethernet adapters have pass-through pins that allow you to keep connecting your hat. You may have to consider whether or not the Pi will still fit in your case of choice. Now, if someone needed to be able to move the Pi around, they might want to power the Pi off of a battery. The quick and easy way to do this is just to get a portable phone charger and connect it over USB. But there are some other battery options specifically for the Pi. Many of them are powered by 18650 batteries, and these are so named because they're 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters long. You've probably encountered these before as you're used on many laptops, although you might not have actually seen them. They look very much like enlarged AA batteries. The base level battery accessories that I've found just provide power and nothing more. I'm using one that was branded under GeekPi when I originally purchased it, although it's available under uh, the brand Masterhawk now. It provides power and that's pretty much it. It does have a few USB power outputs so that other devices could be powered from them, and it has a power button for being able to turn it on and off. This battery connects to the Pi from the underside of the board with some pogo pins, so it leaves a 40 pin connector completely open. A step up from this is the GeekPi X728. This unit has a built in real time clock. It also has scripts that can be used to probe the battery level of the Pi. Additionally, you can set or remove jumpers to change some of the behavior of the board. 
So you can enable or disable whether or not the Pi powers up when power is supplied. Enable or disable safe shutdown when the battery is low. And you can also enable or disable the detection of external power. Now this unit connects to the top of the Pi, but it also has some pass-through pins. If you want to use a hat with this board, you can, but you might need an extension of some type to provide enough space. Otherwise, the batteries may get in the way. Now the last power supply that I've used, uh, it was branded under the name Pi Juice. There's a case for this unit also, but the case that I've seen for it is only for the Raspberry Pi 3. I haven't seen a Raspberry Pi 4 case. Now, of the available units, this is actually one of my favorites. While I would prefer that it use a 18650 battery, and it doesn't, uh, it does have a key capability that the other ones do not. And that is, you can schedule the Pi to turn on. Through scripts, the Pi can be told to shut down and wake up at a certain time. With this capability, if the Pi needed to be occasionally on to do some work, it can be left to operate for a long uh, period of time without exhausting its battery, since it would just need to wake up, perform its work, go back to sleep, and conserve power. I've also got this information in text form, so if you're interested and would like to view it, you can find it over at my blog at blog.j2i.net. And feel free to ask me questions on any of the social media accounts that I have. So you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. Until next time.